Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church, Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one or another of the lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office selection. Right, today for Friday, let's take a look at the lesson that's assigned from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 14, beginning at verse 15. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I brought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Okay, so here's one of the stories. Of, uh, there's a couple of different versions in the different Gospels. Uh, one, with, one of them talks about the wedding garment, and that's a whole other part of the story. Uh, Luke leaves that detail out because he's doing this one part of the teaching of Jesus that has to do with this person who begins the, this pericope, this teaching, with, you know, blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And so it's an opportunity for Jesus to talk about salvation. Because the reality is, is that there are people who are invited as members of the original covenant. Uh, and so the, this great owner invites the original members of the original covenant to come in and they begin to make excuses, right? I, I can't come because I have a, a five yoke of ox. I have to make sure they're okay. Uh, I've been I just got married. I can't come, etc., etc. They're making excuses not to come to the thing that they've been invited to. And of course, representative spiritually of be coming to know the Messiah as their Lord and Savior, um, and because he's the fulfillment of that covenant. Um, and so the master says to the servants, just go out and bring in more people. And they said, we've invited, and there's still room. He said, well, compel those other people to come. Uh, and, uh, and that those who were invited and haven't come, they shall not taste of the supper. They're not excluded. They will not be invited again. Uh, now, this, of course, has to do with the people of the original covenant who said no, and the fact that we will be including, Jesus will be including in after his resurrection and ascension and the coming of the Holy Ghost, we'll be including in those of outside of the original covenant, the people of the, of the Gentiles, those who are not members of the original covenant, are now invited to come. They have to actually show up. There's more room. But how does this affect us? Well, we're now, as people on the inside of this new covenant through the blood of Jesus Christ, We've now been invited. What excuses are we making not to show up, right? The great banquet to eat bread in heaven. The foretaste is here on earth when we have the great celebration on Sunday of the Holy Communion. And we make excuses. I'm really tired. I've got up early all this week for work. I need a day off or, uh, or you know, I got some, I got good tea time, et cetera, et cetera. What are the excuses we're making? And how does it anger our Lord? It's a question we have to be realistic and ask in our hearts. So today, I said it's Friday, uh, we do not have uh, public worship today at St. John's, but we are, of course, saying our prayers. I hope you're praying for us at St. John's. You know that I'm praying for you, and may you have a Friday that is full of blessings.